Hello friends and my dear students. I'm back with a new lecture and uh, the topic of today's lecture is this is definition, classification, causative agents and social causation. So this lecture is in continuity with my previous lecture that I delivered on understanding health and in that lecture we tried to understand some of the important basic concepts of sociology of health and then try to understand some of the important conditions related to health, especially uh, social context of health, sociological and uh, social, science, social sciences perspectives on health. And then uh, in this lecture, uh, we need to move further. Uh, basically, this lecture is divided in four parts, defining disease, classification of disease, causative agents of disease and social causes of disease or social causation of disease. So there are so many things that I would like to speak, but I think uh, I have prepared extensive slides. So I'll focus more on what I want to say and uh, the matter which is already included in the slides, I'll leave this for you to read and understand. I'll talk about them off and on as required because uh, I have to, I, I want to make this video uh, sh short, uh, otherwise it's going very long. But yes, uh, before we talk about this, uh, I must say that if you have not uh, watched my earlier uh, lecture on health, then do watch that and that is available on uh, YouTube channel, right? So now, uh, before we talk about uh, disease, uh, let me very briefly talk about some of the dimensions of health as explained by WHO. In the previous class, we talked about definition given by WHO, but we didn't talk about dimensions. We kept that uh, safe for today's class. Uh, some of you are already familiar with this, but those who are not familiar, let me uh, briefly summarize it for them. Uh, WHO in its preamble, uh, when it defined health, it talked about uh, three dimensions. These are the physical dimension, mental dimension, and social dimension. And each of these dimensions are talking about a specific science. For example, the physical dimension, it includes uh, several things like bright eyes, lustrous hair, and a well-coordinated uh, movement sort of thing. Or for that matter, mental health is talking about uh, free from internal conflict. Social dimension is talking about uh, community consciousness, social functioning. Now, going beyond these three dimensions, uh, an expert group also talked about uh, inclusion of the spiritual dimension. Because a spiritual dimension is something which is talking about uh, uh, values, uh, purpose of life, uh, fulfillment in life, hope and will, which is playing very important role in giving direction to the first three dimensions. And again, uh, there is a new demand to include emotional dimension of health. Uh, so uh, what is coming to our mind is this, that the dimensions of health are keeping evolving. So why is it that these are evolving? Because, because uh, problems related to health are changing, dynamic and evolving and so the responses are also evolving. Now, with this background, we uh, move to our uh, first section that is understanding disease. So WHO has not defined disease but defined health and for that uh, reason, we need to take definitions from uh, other sources for understanding health. There are two definitions I am quoting here. Uh, first is from Webster's Dictionary and it defines disease as a condition in which body health is impaired. That means the functioning of the body is impaired and it is a departure from the normal state of health and some kind of alteration in the functioning of the human body has taken place. So when when some kind of alteration is taking place in the performance of the vital functions of the body, 
or some kind of departure from the condition of health is taking place, then this condition is generally identified as disease. Right? There's another de uh, definition given by Oxford English Dictionary, and it says that a condition of the body or some part or organ of the body in which its functions are disrupted or deranged. So the first definition is talking about uh, some sort of departure from uh, the state of health. And here it is stated that, that if some part of the body is, is actually not functioning the way it should function, then this condition may be identified as, as disease. So from these two definitions, we can say that when, uh, when there is a departure from the normal functioning of the body, this is a physiological part, right? Now, here we introduce uh, the views of uh, Hookerham and Ritchie, who bring in two new concepts in this context. And they say that when we talk about the physical state and talk about the physiological dysfunction, then this is the state of disease, but this is different from the state of illness, which is more uh, psychological or subjective awareness of the disease, right? Yet if somebody is suffering from some kind of disease, then this is a, a condition. But when the person is aware of, subjectively aware of that condition, then this is the state of illness and when this person is making a social declaration or for that matter, if other possible agencies are, are, are recording or noticing that condition of that individual, then this is, the, when, when, when the society is knowing about it, when this social disclosure or declaration is made, then this condition is known as sickness, right? So when we examine the condition of disease in social context, or especially sociologically, then these two conditions, illness and sickness become very important. We are not talking about these two concepts in today's lecture, but we'll talk about these two conditions in our next lecture and we'll go, we'll go for a very elaborate discussion because those two conditions are very important to understand the overall trajectory of, uh, of disease from disease to healthcare, right? Uh, from a sociological point of view, disease is considered a social phenomenon occurring in all societies and defined and fought in terms of the particular forces prevalent in that society. Uh, disease is, 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 is a universal phenomenon, it's a social phenomenon. Although the conditions which are defined as disease may not remain same, but the phenomenon of some kind of departure from health is almost universal. Sociologists and especially uh, uh, the theoretical perspectives which emerge in sociology have examined this phenomenon very elaborate, elaborately. We have the functionalist, Marxist and symbolic interactionist perspectives. And beyond that, we also have feminist perspective and the Foucauldian perspective. But we will not talk about these perspectives as of now, but at some stage we'll talk about these things because today, uh, I think our focus is on understanding the several possible dimensions of disease. Now, disease, because it is primarily focusing on the physiological part, so the biomedical model, which is uh, generally uh, identified as the biological and uh, medical model, the, the, the combination of the biological and medical model, primarily known as biomedical model. So this biomedical model has given a proper uh, description of the conditions of disease. And uh, this model says that when somebody, when they are talking about disease, then there are several assumptions. The assumptions are uh, mentioned here. I'll talk about just some of them. Basically, it is an organic condition. Organic means if we talk about some kind of uh, its existence in the organs or the human body. And then this is a temporary condition. It's not a permanent. It may get eradicated. It may get cured. When uh, the, the occurrence of this condition makes individuals sick and object of treatment. So basically, uh, the, the, the arrival of disease is making somebody sick and the, 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 the state of sickness actually is opening the doors of 
dose of treatment. So, uh, as I stated earlier, sickness, so illness and sickness, these are two necessary conditions that we talk about when we move from the, from, from the state of disease to the state of uh, seeking treatment. One thing very important here, disease is treated after the symptoms appear. So this is the biggest uh, 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 underlining condition here that that disease is treated only after symptoms appear. The application of medicine is a reactive healing process. If the symptoms are if the symptoms are not arrived, then it will be very difficult to identify. We will talk about identification of disease also. And one important thing here is this that a disease is treated in a medical environment. Uh, that means uh, uh, surgery or a, a clinic or a hospital, but uh, we, one should not confuse that that uh, this treatment is possible only in a clinic or a hospital. Uh, a medical environment largely talks about the prevalence of the medical conditions, right? And biomedical approach uh, is is has made a massive contribution. So it is very prestigious. Also, it is it, its its voice is well accepted because of uh, several important milestones uh, like the um, invention of antibiotics or vaccination, which has basically controlled uh, mortality in last two centuries. However, uh, this uh, biomedical approach is not free from uh, limitations and there are social, sociologists and social scientists who have pointed out some of the limitations also and we'll talk about them as and when required. So now we come to the next part that is identification or diagnosis of a disease. So this is a very important part basically because when you look at the trajectory of health and uh, disease and health care that means when we, we try to provide some kind of medical care or health care to a person who is suffering from some kind of disease, then identification of that disease is very important. So the problem is there, right? Some sort of problem, some sort of ailment, some sort of suffering is there that an individual is identifying. And that is the, uh, the, 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 the subjective awareness of this problem is something that we have defined as illness that we will talk about at a later stage also. But when the person has identified the stage of illness, then the person is reporting the problem to, to other agencies. And when the other agencies are also identifying this, 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 then this gets converted into sickness, right? Sickness. And when there is sickness, then people report to basically a, a medical uh, service provider, maybe a health service provider or uh, a medicine provider or whosoever is there in that particular uh, system of medicine. But the issue is this, that whatever is the system of medicine, the problem that is reported by the individual is needs to be, in, in, the problem needs to be identified, needs, needs to be recognized. And here a, a, space, a, a specific process or mechanism is operating. Now, what is this? As it is stated by uh, Richard Thomas, identification of a medically recognized pathological condition is the most significant component of seeking treatment. So before seeking treatment or before providing treatment, the problem needs to be identified. The problem needs to be recognized. And for that, some sort, some sort of uh, uh, identifiable and measurable signs and symptoms are taken account of. And these identifiable and measurable signs and symptoms are basically identified on the basis of some kind of correlationship between the observable signs or symptoms of a disease and the existing knowledge. Right. So when a person is reporting about some problem, then the, 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 the signs and the symptoms which are being reported, those are actually compared with the kind of knowledge which is available. And when something, something is identified, something is recognized, then some kind of treatment is provided. And if it is not getting recognized, then what happens? Then this is there are so many things which are happening and those are very interesting phenomena. Sociologically, those uh, needs to be examined and we'll talk about those things when we'll talk about this, the concepts of illness and sickness. But as of now, we are keeping ourselves confined 
to this. Now, this understanding of disease depends upon observation of altered abnormal state of human organism. Basically, when uh, somebody is saying that that his his condition, his state is is altered or some kind of abnormal or uh, or malfunctioning is basically uh, observed or reported then then the process of identification of disease is 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 beginning these signs may be objectively observed and even measurable when when we talk about those signs and symptoms so there is a, there, there, there is a, is an effort and there is a possibility that this can be recorded objectively, but not necessarily, not always, because there are several symptoms or uh, there are problems which uh, which cannot be identified with certain uh, 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 certain symptoms or signs, right? Which cannot be related. In those cases, those cannot be recorded very objectively. So when people say that disease is a very objective condition, then this is actually contradicted by sociologists also that yes, although disease has some kind of objectivity, some kind of objectivity, because some signs and symptoms are, uh, are, are available, are observable or verifiable, but not necessarily in, uh, in all situations, right? So it has objectivity, but not necessarily. Sometimes this disease is also having some kind of subjectivity, something which is happening in the case of COVID-19 that we are witnessing. Now we move to classification of disease. Yes, uh, disease is classific classified in uh, several ways. In day-to-day uh, -day use, common talents, we often talk about a disease in terms of the organ it is getting affected like heart disease or respiratory infection or kidney disease or sometimes we talk about the the, uh, the disease in terms of the causative agent like the viral disease or chemical poisoning sort of thing now uh, when we talk about the causative agent then we can uh, see that there are three types of agents, the biological agents, the chemical agents, and the physical agents. Uh, we can see the description in the slides. I'm not going to repeat those things. Virus is a biological agent, then the pesticides or chemicals are the chemical agents or uh, the, 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 the physical environment like uh, the presence of ultraviolet uh, light or radiation, etc. are the physical agents. Further, in community health, diseases are uh, also classified as acute or chronic. Acute is, is something which is having severe impact, but it is existing in the short term and chronic is something which is having a long term kind of causation. And then uh, these are also classified as communicable and non-communicable. But this communicable and non-communicable is one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, classification at the global level uh, as well as uh, Indian context, we find most of the reports which talk about uh, this kind of classification. So a communicable uh, disease is something that we all understand. The, the, those diseases which are caused by some biological agents or their products. In such uh, situations, communicable disease, there is an agent the biological agent that we just talked about and there is a host. Now the interaction between this agent and this host is actually not a very simple kind of interaction. This agent is not affecting all the host uniformly, right? So when uh, it's not a very simplistic explanation that such and such biological agents are affecting uh, such and such host, no. Even if the, the biological agent is, is, is entering into the body of the host, it's not necessary that the impact will be the same. Maybe some of the host will remain unaffected and maybe some of the host will get seriously affected. That means the interaction between the agent and the host depends on uh, several other factors, maybe the environmental factors, maybe the, 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 the immune system of that particular individual, and maybe the larger uh, you know, genetic and other uh, racial configurations, right? So there are, there are a combination of things, and that is why we need to understand this relationship between host and agent in a very systematic way, and this communication or this communicable is basically 
is come is is becoming possible only when people come in close social contact and this close social contact is actually a social context is actually a social situation and that is why the, the causation of communicable disease is of the, the causation of communicable disease is largely considered as a social process and that is why the students of sociology are much interested in the in in, in the study of disease and especially the communicable disease now there are some statistics available i'm not going to uh, 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 to read out these uh, these are available but one thing that is uh, very obvious here is this that tuberculosis is a communicable disease and uh, almost 10 million cases were prevailing in the world and one fifth of that that's it, 2 million were prevailing in india uh, as per the ministry of health and family welfare report 2010 so there are several other communicable diseases like hiv malaria dengue chikungunya malaria and they have substantial presence in india now i would like to add here that covid 19 is again a corona uh, virus is a communicable disease now one uh, uh, thing i would like to share here that the western world the developed part of the world has almost controlled the spread of communicable disease and so uh, they were almost almost uh, certain that they will not uh, see the spread of any communicable disease uh, this covid 19 is a big surprise for all of them so now we move uh, uh, to the next slide and this is uh, something related to non communicable or the non infectious disease uh, non communicable disease or ncds are result of combination of genetic physiological environmental and behavioral factors uh, these conditions include cardiovascular disease cancer diabetes respiratory disease mental health etc right there is a huge prevalence of this disease at global level in 21st century uh, uh, as of today, we can see that there are approximately 41 million people uh, worldwide who are affected by this every year. And this is 71% of the global death. That means the death caused by the non-communicable disease is much more than the death caused by communicable disease. That is why we are saying that the Western world has already controlled the mortalities caused because of the communicable disease. This COVID-19 is a new exception. Even in India, uh, uh, six, uh, about 6 million people are dying from NCDs. Uh, even in India, uh, recently, uh, the, the mortalities caused uh, because of non-communicable diseases have, uh, have increased from the mortalities caused because of the communicable disease. And this, is, this phenomenon is known as uh, epidemiological uh, transition also. Anyway, now once we have seen uh, the, 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 the causation of this disease, then let us try to understand the causative agents. There are uh, biological agents, but beyond those biological agents, there are several other agents which are very important and especially for a student of social science, these, uh, these agents are very important. So there are nutrient agents like uh, fat, protein, carbohydrate, vitamins, minerals, etc. These are very important. Their deficiency or their overpresence both are problematic. Sometimes undernutrition, sometimes overnutrition, both are coming under the category of malnutrition sort of thing. And then there are physical agents like heat, cold, humidity, pressure, radiation, etc. Then there are chemical agents. Now, the chemical agents are again of two types, the endogenous, something which is happening inside the body. Like uh, sometimes we get to know that uh, 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 bilirubin is increased that is causing the, the, the jaundice type of phenomenon or urea or, uh, or something uh, related to uh, some acidity sort of thing right so they are the, the the indigenous factors and they are the exogenous factors in which the body is getting affected to the external chemical agents so uh, Going beyond these things, there are uh, another set of agents. These are known as the social agents. Uh, basically, it should have been uh, point number five, but by mistake, it is point number six. Now, the social uh, agents are actually the larger social environment. For example, poverty, then uh, smoking, abuse of drugs, alcohol, unhealthy lifestyle, social isolation. There are so many social conditions which are uh, which are actually surrounding all these 
uh, other agents. The biological or nutrient or physical agents are actually surrounded by the social conditions. So that is why we need to examine the social conditions independently and very comprehensively because these are very important in terms of understanding the trajectory of causes and of disease. And sometimes we are talking about the, the preventive medicine. That means uh, we, we are moving, we are trying to prevent the occurrence of the disease. So for, for implementation of preventive disease or the preventive medicine, basically we need to understand the causes and pattern. If we continue to think that, that the disease are caused because of only biological agents, then the implementation will remain confined to that. But if you understand that the prevention is not possible unless we take care of the larger social environment, then only we can make the proper intervention. So uh, understanding the social setting or the social causation is very important. And here, uh, four specific types of conditions have been identified. One is the lifestyle factor. Lifestyle is not necessarily related to only alcohol or drugs sort of thing. Rather, the whole set of things which are, uh, which are uh, included in the individual in the, in the life of an individual is basically part of this. So it may be uh, tobacco or use of alcohol or drugs or maybe poor diet or lack of exercise sort of thing or sedentary lifestyle sort of thing. All these things are part of this lifestyle factor. Then the social situation. Social situation is very important because lifestyle is actually determined by the social conditions. Or the social situation. So social class, caste, ethnicity, etc. are playing very important role. In England, uh, a report was prepared that is known as a black report and that has established that, that class is a very important determinant of, of, of this disease kind of thing. And in India, we have seen uh, the, 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 the large scale statistics provide by, provided by National Family Health Survey and other surveys. And we get to know that, that those who are suffering uh, from uh, poverty or those who are deprived uh, classes like the scheduled tribes and scheduled caste, etc., or those who are coming from some uh, specific ethnic groups, they are having poor health outcome. That means these things are playing very important role. Gender again is playing a very important role. Most of the, uh, you can see that uh, a big percentage of women, uh, more than 60% are often uh, anemic. Then comes the third important factor that is a very important factor and that is public health system. Basically, in the contemporary context, the societies are democratic and most of the societies are welfare societies and every welfare society is supposed to have the public health system. Yesterday, uh, in the previous class, we talked about uh, uh, the universal declaration of uh, 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 the, the univer universal declaration of human rights and health is considered as a basic human right or for that matter uh, constitution of india is also considering health as a basic human right right so basic uh, fundamental right article 21 is talking about that the uh, right to life that means every nation state in some or the other form is talking about talking about right to life and right to health but but what is happening that the public health system is not functioning the way it should function. Now, what do we mean by public health? It includes several things uh, basically, but the government run uh, machinery or mechanisms are there for that matter, drinking water facility, then the basic sewage system, sanitation system, and then uh, uh, some kind of uh, electricity and uh, all other health related facilities in the government hospitals, healthcare system, etc. All these things are part of the public health system. So if a state is not performing good in health indicator, in terms of the health indicators, then certainly the public health system is responsible for that. Because any state which is having poor public health system cannot perform, cannot provide very good health indicators. So this is, an, this is a domain where huge intervention needs to be made if we want to improve the, the outcome or the, the health care or the indicators of the health. And the fourth point is basically something which is also proposed by me and I've termed it like basic health goods. Here I'm talking about uh, four important components. This is a nutrition, food, safe drinking, water, and sanitation. Actually, most of the communicable, rather all of the communicable diseases are caused because of these four factors. Nutrition, food, safe drinking, water, and sanitation. And most of the non-communicable diseases are also somehow getting governed by because of these four variables. So if we want to address the problem of disease, we need to address this problem. Or we can say that if we are not 
not addressing these problems we cannot address the problem of health and uh, investment made on 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 providing medical care will, will remain almost meaningless we cannot think of having a sustainable uh, a perspective a sustainable health care uh, without providing these basic health goods and that's why we are talking about these things these are like the public goods every time we make investment on these things these things will give you better and uh, uh, better and larger uh, returns and the last but not the least uh, the governance basically uh, health needs to be uh, considered as a basic human right and it should attract a larger investment from the government and there should be some kind of uh, uh, the society should be an inclusive society there are studies which 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 suggests that a society which is more divisive which is more divided in terms of class or caste or other things they are having a poor outcome in terms of health so an inclusive society is providing better health outcome so a society must have a participatory uh, culture there should be the components of civil society and there should be quality governance so uh, we cannot achieve uh, the targets of health for all without having a uh, good rather great governance so poor governance and lack of civil society is also one of the uh, one of the causes of poor health so uh, uh, but this is how we come to the end of the uh, this lecture and uh, before i close i would like to uh, uh, remind you about few things uh, one last thing is this that i have used uh, the references here but uh, you, you, if you want to see those references, you can consult my book that is on sociology of health, uh, published by Rao Publication, and then uh, uh, some other references uh, are are already mentioned in different uh, slides. And then uh, one last thing that if you are interested in sociology of sociology of health, then please uh, keep watching these lectures. Uh, sometimes. Uh, these lecture become or appear to be boring uh, because uh, this is again a new sort of new uh, sort of thing experimentation on my part new learning we keep on learning new things so uh, this is not a live lecture uh, uh, delivered in a classroom rather it is a, a lecture that I, that i am uh, recording and this is uh, some sort of new experience for me so uh, please excuse me for uh, those things where, where I could not come up to your expectation. But yes, uh, please enjoy uh, at least those things where I'm coming up to your expectation. So do provide your comments and share it so that I can reach to the uh, students who uh, may be in need of this kind of lecture. So thank you very much. Uh, keep watching. And if you have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe so that you will get the information related to the next lecture. So thank you very much. Uh, take care.